Hey friends, criminal defense attorney Ryan Pasiga here, and today I'm going to talk about what's called a downward durational departure. And we're talking about state court here. So let me give you the story. I had a client who uh, there was a disagreement on the side of the road between two different groups of vehicles. And uh, my client and his friend both take off in the first vehicle and the other vehicle starts chasing them, okay? All right, the people in the other vehicle call 911 and they say my client and the other guy are both pointing guns at them, right? So law enforcement gets up on this and these people continue to chase my client and his friend. And eventually my client and his friend park the uh, vehicle in a farm uh, and they take off out of the vehicle, right? So law enforcement finds the vehicle. Now, they start also questioning these people who said that the guns were uh, pointed at them. Turns out that these people who said the guns were pointed at them did tell at least some lies and were even caught later in a lie by one of them giving a fake name to the officer because that person who was one of the alleged victims uh, had a revoked driver's license and wasn't supposed to be driving. So he gave him his brother's name. And law enforcement, by the way, never turned out to charge that person with giving false information to police. But nonetheless, what happened is law enforcement finds this abandoned vehicle now. And uh, my client and his friend had uh, taken off. And law enforcement starts to take a dog track and other things and look for these guys. And eventually they find them in the woods by the side of a river. Law enforcement never finds uh, any guns whatsoever. Maybe the guns were ditched. Maybe these guys never had guns in the first place. But law enforcement did find ammunition scattered all over uh, the floorboards uh, and in the cup holders and things of this abandoned vehicle. Law enforcement uh, has the dogs. They find these guys in the woods, put these guys under arrest, uh, pat search them, take them down to the jail, do an article search of their clothing, and they find um, ammunition uh, in my client's pocket. He had a prior... Uh, qualified crime, a domestic, that prevented him from ever possessing firearms or ammunition. So based on that, uh, the prosecution charged him with a whole host of crimes, including ineligible person in possession of a firearm and ineligible person in possession of ammunition. Both of those carry a 60-month, which is a five-year, mandatory minimum under Minnesota law. In addition, they had charged him with assault with a firearm, which also uh, can carry at least three years of prison time, threats of violence, and some other things. So uh, the other client, the other defendant, had pled out pretty early in his case. Our defense of this case took three years for a variety of reasons. One of the things was COVID, though that that did uh, contribute to some delays. Well, at any rate, uh, here we are showing up. We have a suppression hearing where we try to get the evidence of the vehicle search thrown out because there was no search warrant for it. Uh, but the judge denied that and said that the evidence was going to stay in. Fine, we took our shot there. So here we are at trial. The client was ready to go to trial. And we end up resolving the case because while he's supposed to get a 60-month mandatory minimum sentence, we negotiated it down to a 36-month sentence that the client wanted to take that. He had a family to get home to. He knew if he went to trial and lost, and the evidence that because it wasn't thrown out by the judge was overwhelming against him, namely ammunition right in his pocket uh, as well as all over the floor of the car that he was driving um, so we negotiated it down to a 36 month sentence now how do you do that if it's a mandatory minimum 60 month sentence well there's a thing called a durational departure under the law which says in our sentencing guidelines if you cite to certain factors you can get a durational departure uh, whether or not the prosecutor agrees with it but the judge has got to agree to it too and one of the reasons we cited here was that this crime was less serious than some of the other crimes where you're dealing with firearm possession or, or ammunition possession. And that is that there were no drugs associated with this. There was no actual violence. Again, it was a dispute about whether there was gun pointing or not. But these people had willingly lied to police about some facts, and that made them questionable witnesses for the state. We knew that if we were going to defend the case. So we agree to a... 36 month sentence, that's what the client wanted. He'll serve 24 months. So instead of spending uh, 60 serving 40, he'll serve 24 months. He was very happy with that outcome. And that's called a downward or durational sentence. Now, it, it sounds nice for lawyers to be able to say, hey, I'll take that case to trial. We'll win it. We'll get a not guilty. We'll get your case thrown out. Listen, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've won a lot of trials. I've had a lot of cases thrown out. 
But any honest lawyer will tell you that not every case can be thrown out. Not every case is going to win at trial. In fact, trials are tough and there's a lot of risk. And sometimes you just have to know what's going on and say, you know what, there's a lot of bad evidence here and you're probably gonna lose and lose bad. And in those instances, if you can get a good outcome that's much better than would be if you go to trial and the client wants to take that, which is always what's most important, then you've got a duty to do that for your client. So he was very happy with this result. We went the extra mile for him in the suppression hearings, hanging onto that case and challenging it all the way. And at the end of the day, you got a happy client that gets a durational departure. He's gonna get home to his family a lot sooner, 24 months, uh, than it would be on the 40 that he would serve with good time, which uh, is 16 months when you're gone with your family is a lot of time that's left saved that you've got kids that are growing up and you can be back to them. So that's what a durational departure is. There, you can't get them in every case, but you gotta have a lawyer that knows how to get them and when to get them and what to do to negotiate to get them, and that's a good outcome. If you have any questions about Minnesota criminal cases or federal cases, I'm Defense Attorney Ryan Pasiga. You can call me at 612-339-5844 or find me at arrestedmn.com.